Thank you, Marion. This morning, when Jesus calls, we have a decision to make, don't we? When Jesus speaks to us and asks us to do something, we have a decision to make. Now, can you imagine being one of the disciples, going about your business, doing uh, your fishing, cleaning your nets, doing the things that you would normally do each and every day? And here comes Jesus, and he asks you to follow him. See, the disciples were called away from everything that they had known, everything they had grown up with, everything they understood, and they were asked to walk a path full of unknowns. If that was you, how do you think you would feel? If Jesus asked you to do that, how do you think you would feel? Maybe a little frightened? I know I would. Concerned? No doubt the disciples were concerned for their families. They helped supply their livelihoods for their families to look after them. Hesitant? Of course. What are you actually asking me to do? Would you refuse? Some of them may well have thought that. I've got responsibilities. I've got things I have to do. I don't have time even though I've heard all these wonderful things about Jesus, do I have to do it? For the majority of us, our default setting when it comes to change is to go to the negative. We ask questions like why? How else can it be done? Can somebody else do it? It's a symptom of the fall, doubting God's plan for us. Does God really expect me to do this, even when I know this is what he wants? That's exactly what Satan did to Eve, wasn't it? Did God really say? He brought doubt. Thankfully, though, doubt itself is not a sin. It's when we choose to follow through on that doubt. That's when the sin comes in. Even Jesus doubted when it came time for the betrayal against him. He asked the Father, if there's a chance that this can pass from me, but your will be done. Peter doubted after Jesus' death, and he returned to fishing. If you take your Bibles and turn to John chapter 21, we read here the story of what Peter did. So John chapter 21, I'm starting with verses 1 to 3. It says there, Afterward, Jesus appeared again to the disciples by the Sea of Galilee. It happened this way. Simon Peter, Thomas, also known as Didymus, Nathaniel from Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two other disciples were together. I'm going out to fish, Simon Peter told them. And they said, we'll go with you. It was normal. Someone goes fishing, we all go. So they went out and got into the boat But that night, they caught nothing. When we doubt, we tend to go back to what we know. The disciples did that. After all, they had left everything behind that they knew and loved, and all to follow the one that they thought could be the Messiah. And yet, at this point, to them it looked like it had all ended in disaster. It ended in failure. Jesus didn't live up to what they thought he was going to be. The change didn't work. They'd been let down. So why continue? In these circumstances, it is far easier to return to the safety and comfort of the past, even if that past is no good for you. I know many of you have done that for yourselves. When times have gotten tough, when things haven't gone your way, you retreat back to what you know even when what you know isn't any good for you. And how did that work out? It hurts to let go, but sometimes it hurts more to hold on. Every time the disciples pulled in their nets, 
they were let down. Can you imagine the discouragement? These guys are seasoned fishermen. They've done this a million times. They'd caught fish after fish. They knew what they were doing. But now the past was no longer working for them. It wasn't that the way to fish had changed. We still fish with nets even today. I still catch nothing with them. But it's still the same kind of method. What had changed, though, was their calling. They were called to do something new, something different, something that would take all the lessons of the past and use them to now change lives, their own and others. In fact, the lessons of their past would be used to literally change the world. Once they were fishers of fish, now they were fishers of people. We read on in verse 4. Early in the morning, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples did not realize that it was Jesus. He called out to them, Friends, haven't you any fish? No, they answered. They must have been thinking, Well, you can see we don't have any. It would have been obvious if we did. Jesus said, Throw your net on the right side of the boat, and you'll find some. When they did, they were unable to haul the net in because of the large number of fish. And then we go down to verse 15. When they had finished eating, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Yes, Lord, he said. You know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my lambs. Again, Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He answered, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said, take care of my sheep. The third time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt because Jesus asked him for the third time, do you love me? He said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my sheep. Very truly I tell you, when you were younger, you dressed yourself and went where you wanted. But when you are old, you will, uh, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will dress you and lead you where you do not want to go. Jesus said this to indicate the kind of death by which Peter would glorify God. Then he said to him, follow me. Thankfully for Peter, Jesus did not hold his reversal to past ways against him when the doubt kicked in. Jesus didn't come and berate him for going back to what he knew. But Jesus also doesn't allow him to stay in the past either. Three times Jesus challenges Peter. It's a challenge not just to reinstate Peter, but it's a challenge to remember what his true purpose is. Sometimes we have to be reminded like that over and over again, don't we? Before it starts to sink in. Those moments come for us in many ways. One of the main ones are when our circumstances change. When we are tempted to remain where we are, stagnant and without direction, Jesus calls us to remember who we live for. In those times when we would rather hide in the... Uh, from the world and stay in our comfort zones, Jesus calls us to remember who directs our lives. When hurt and pain tells us to give up and accept defeat, Jesus calls us to remember who walks the road with us and who lives within us. We don't need to succumb to temptation, to fall to adversity, to run from challenge and to shrink from accusation. We remember that we are not our own. We belong to Jesus. Which brings us to the last challenge that Jesus gives to Peter. See, we often read the do you love me questions and we stop at that. But Jesus didn't stop at that. There was one remaining challenge that he gives to Peter. It is simple and it is life-altering. 
he says, follow me. It is a decision we come back to over and over again. Every move you make, every step you take, every choice, every single day, every word that comes from your mouth, every word that you say is a demonstration of your desire to follow him. Do we get that? Every part of our being, every word, every action, every thought, is a reflection of our desire to follow him. Which keeps coming back then to that question of Jesus. Because it's not just a question for Peter. It's a question for all of us. Will you follow him? Let's pray. Father, Jesus' words are clear. We are called to follow. That we don't belong to ourselves anymore. That we are yours. Father, forgive us of those times when we do doubt. When our doubt leads us to sin. When our doubt leads us to turn our own way. To do our own thing. Father, help us to remember that simple command of Jesus. When times are tough, when times are easy, at all times, may we remember Jesus' words, follow me. Father, may our answer to that be yes. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.